All right, Sooner Nation. Well, we've all been waiting to see this, haven't we? We were waiting to see with the black uniforms of Texas Tech. Would that mean another funeral to another OU football season? Well, it very well could have. Because uh, with two losses already and heading into the Cotton Bowl, with two losses would not have been good. But Mike, Le Mike, Mike Stoops, not Mike Leach, Mike Stoops is back in Norman. And he was part of that staff from 03. The last team to rep tech in Lubbock. And guess what? He did it again. With a final score of 41 to 20. Which, to be completely honest with you, wasn't even a three touchdown ball game. Texas Tech was just, they were dominated on the offensive and the defensive side of the ball. They could not get a whole lot going. And uh, I'll show you how that happened, why it happened. We'll get into it. My, uh, the, the, the stats, the hype, of the, the hype of the game, the stoopsy stop of the night, the three goals, all of it. As finally, Boomer Sooner wreck Red Raiders in Lubbock. Coming up next, only here on the Post Game Show. Don't go away. I've been ready to do this post-game show ever since the pre-game show started. I mean, I, I was ready for this game. I knew this game would happen. I knew Mike Stoops could do it as they wreck Tech. Boomer Sooner wreck Red Raiders. Let's tell you how it happened. Well, it happened all in the first quarter is when it started. On the first drive, actually, as the Sooners take up the first five minutes of the clock. And with 10.59 left in the first quarter, well, Andrew Jones hit former Penn State receiver and current Boomer Sooner receiver Justin Brown for 13 yards. Touchdown Sooners, as my good friend Toby Rowland would say. But Tech was Tech, and Tech came back and scored seven points of their own. Kenny Williams, Seven-yard touchdown run with 7-11 left. It is 7-7, seven, seven, and the Sooners and the Red Raiders are tied. End of the scoring for the first quarter. End of the second quarter, we go. When Ryan Buston of Texas Tech nailed a 35-yard field goal for Texas Tech, giving Tech their first and only lead of this ball game, 7-10 with 14-22 left in the game. But then, probably the most popular name in OU football, Blake. From Blake Griffin to Blake Bell. And this time, it was the football Blake. Blake Bell. The Blaker. The football Blaker. Give, give it to the guy. And Oklahoma did. One yard touchdown run for OU. 14 10 Sooners with 11 08 left. Then Ryan Buston makes it a one PAT ball game with a 43 yard field goal with 6.58 left. Sooners still ahead 14 13. 
Then it was time for Landry to show up again. And he does. With a Landry Jones. Can he still hook up? 31 yards. Touchdown, Sooners. 21-13 with 3.27 left. Then, after a Oklahoma interception by a man who had a beast of a game, Aaron Colvern, Michael Honeycutt finishes the half with a 33-yard field goal of his own for OU with 31 seconds left. 24-13 Sooners. And it's halftime. Second half of the ball game. Third quarter we go. Another one-yard touchdown by, you guessed it, the football Blake. Blake Bell, the football Blaker. A one-yard touchdown run, making it 31-13 with 9-13 left in favor of Oklahoma. It's going pretty well, right? Well, because on the next drive, you know, you got to go to OU, kick it off. Well, that is when my boy from Lawton MacArthur, he had a hard game last year in this series, but not this time. Javon Harris intercepts in. 46-yard touchdown return. 38-13 with 8.40 left. And the final score for the Boomer Schooner, Sooner Schooners, the final score for the Sooner Schooner came with 40 seconds left. In the third quarter, when Michael Honeycutt hit a 42-yard field goal with 40 seconds and seconds left to make it 41-13 Sooners in favor. But then with 56 seconds left in the fourth quarter, this is the fourth quarter now, fourth quarter, Sadell Foster, a three-yard touchdown run. For Texas Tech, a garbage touchdown, 41-20 with 56 seconds left. That's the end of the scoring. That's the end of the ball game. Before we get to the stats and the high pools game of the night and all that, I have to give a uh, couple of my helmet stickers as ESPN does theirs. I have to give mine out. I could give one to Aaron Culver. But he's my defensive play of the player of the game. Here's who I'm going to give these to, okay? I'm going to give them to Javon Harris and uh, Michael Honeycutt. These two guys in this same in, in this same series last year had a hard, hard, hard time. We all know what Javon Harris did. Javon Harris got beat two or three times in the route. And uh, Michael Honeycutt missed two field goals that uh, could have saved OU's season thus far. As far as that far into the season came. Uh, missed him. This time he hit two of two. Proud of the guy. Way to go, Mike. Way to step up as a sophomore. Um, stat, the rest of the stats look like this. The... All-time winning quarterback at OU with Steve Davis is Landry Jones. That happened. Mm -hmm. Along with that happening, Landry Jones also threw for 259 yards and two touches. No interceptions. Way to go, Landry. No turnovers in this ballgame. Seth Dehe had 203 yards. No touchdowns and three Apple turnovers. Three interceptions. Damian Williams had 14 carries for 48 yards and no touchdowns. While the Sadell Foster had 11 carries for 44 yards and one touchdown. The leading receivers for each side, well, for Oklahoma, it was Damien Williams. Six catches, 82 yards, zero touches. Zero touchdowns. And for Darian Foster, he had, for Tech, he had five catches for 80 yards and no touchdowns. 
Uh, defensively, the defense was held down by a guy who played this night. He was knocked senseless there in the first quarter. He got a. He also had a fumble, by the way, that was not recovered but forced in this game. But the turnover that he did have was an interception. He also had a pass breakup. He had six tackles. The interception that he had led to a field goal, and that would be Aaron Culver. So Aaron Culver is the defensive player of the game for Oklahoma. Six tackles, a pass breakup, and an interception all in this game. While D.J. Johnson for Texas Tech had ten tacks. Tackles, that is. Kicking-wise, nobody really had the advantage here. Both kickers were two for two. Oklahoma's Michael Honeycutt, who grew up actually in the last year, after missing a couple of field goals in last year's set, made them both this year, uh, long of 42 yards and a 32-yarder to boot. And Ryan Buston, the kicker for Texas Tech, 43 yards is long, and a boot of 35. The punting, well, everybody knows who it is for Oklahoma, right? Well, you should. It's Tress Way. He had to do it four times today with an average of 45.2, two punts inside the 20 yard line, and a long of 71 in the first quarter. For the other side, Texas Tech, they also had two. Ryan Expobin, his dad is a former Texas Longhorn. The son that plays for the Raiders, he had four tenths. 41 as an average, 47 along, and no of them, none of them were inside the 20-yard line. Hypel's hype of the game. Well, what about the first touchdown? I thought that you needed to go right in there and score, and the Sooners did that. The Sooners said, you know what? We've had our troubles in Lubbock. We know that, but this is a new team. It's a new era, and we have to go right down there and score on that number one pass, on that number one defense, and they did. Because with 10.59 left, the Sooners took the first lead of the ball game, 7 to nothing Sooners, when Landry Jones hit Justin Brown for a 13-yard Touchdown pass. Stoopsie's stop of the night came when Seth Dahey was sacked on fourth and five by Frank Shannon, a reserve linebacker for the Sooners. At that time, you know, I could have picked one of Aaron's interceptions. I could have picked uh, the interception from my boy from Lawton Matt, Javon Harris. The reason I picked this play is uh, at this time, it is 24-13. If they go down there and at least kick a field goal, it's 24-16, and it's an eight-point ball game. If they score the touchdown, it's 24-20, to and they're still in the game. But they got the stop, and then they turn Oklahoma – Got the stop here, fourth and five on Seth Dehi as he's sacked by Frank Shannon. Sooners go down and score and really take the uh, take the take the oath oath take the take the tech and turning into a wreck. Uh, the three goals that I had. This is a spread offense. So what does Landry have to do? He has to spread the love, spread the love, Landry, in this spread. And he did. Kenny Stills had seven catches and a touchdown. Damien Williams had six receptions and 82 yards. And Sterling Shepard had four for 41 yards. So he they passed that with flying colors, seven, six, and four respectively, just for those guys. There were more players that made more catches, of course. And, uh, by the way, no receiver for Oklahoma was over 100 yards. But still he threw for 259 yards. It's 
It's pretty impressive. That, that tells you that he's learning how to spread it out. Message sent and delivered. Remember, I said that in this game, the second goal was to uh, defense. Get pressure and get turnovers. Interceptions. Sacks. Well, the sacks didn't the sacks and the hurries didn't come from the defensive line as as uh, Barry Switzer would have said it. But Frank Shannon did get one, and there were a couple of hurries in this ballgame. Two sacks, two hurries, and then the three interceptions. Of course, the three interceptions, one by Javon Harris, one by Aaron Franklin, or Colvin, I should say. And one was by Jamarcus McFarlane, who came back in this ballgame. Uh, J-Mac uh, intercepted the football and uh, dropped it <laughs> going into the end zone. Uh, and, and finally, the third set of goals was to win each quarter. First quarter was tied 7-7. Second quarter... Oklahoma took advantage, 17-6. to Third quarter, shutout, 17 nothing, blanked them. And uh, almost did the same thing in the fourth quarter. Gave up a uh, garbage touchdown there late with 56 seconds left in the ball game. So that's a pass. So you did everything that I thought that you needed to do to win this ball game, and guess what? You won the ball game by double digits. Um, this was a big time win for Oklahoma. Landry Jones is now tied with Steve Davis with the all-time winning uh, uh, at OU. Congratulations to Landry, by the way. Uh, this was this was a hard-fought, hard-fought thing for him to get. We all know uh, how it started against the hurricane of Tulsa and my and then the next week with Miami. But man, has this guy grown up. And uh, now he'll prepare for a, his final time with OU Texas. Where as a starter, this guy's undefeated. The uh, of course the first game doesn't count because Sam came in, Sam started the game. This is uh, so his first official start of the night was uh, when he uh, basically uh, fumbled the football on the five yard line, and uh, we got a break, got the ball back. Tresser punted it, and Texas muffed the punt. And the muff punt is picked up by a uh, James Winchester. His dad was at OU. His sister played on the OU women's basketball team. The son and the brother pick up the muff punt. Oklahoma downs it. And then, uh, of course, last year, he stayed undefeated as a starter with a just... Dominating, the all humanating win over Texas in the Cotton Bowl. So, that sets up that game again. One final time for this time around. 50. Good land. Could have scored 50 in this one, but they didn't. 41 to 20, Sooners win. And as uh, good old JR would say it, JR would say it this way because, uh, you know, last Monday he had his night in, Nor in Oklahoma City. So uh, this is how JR would say it Sooners win! Sooners win! Sooners win! 41 to 20. And like I said, it wasn't even that close. Oh, <laughs> like I, as always, I always. Always, always post the score on Twitter. Follow me, Harry Taylor, or Center Fan OK. Find me on Facebook, 
Harry James Taylor. It's that easy. Until next time, until the pregame for OU Texas, this is Harry James Taylor. One final time, the, the Oklahoma Sooners, Boomer Sooner, wrecked the Texas Tech Red Raiders in Lubbock with a final score, 41-20. to 20. Thanks for watching, guys, and Boomer Sooner!